Bang for Buck PC Gamer. Hey guys, it's Bang for Buck PC Gamer here, and we can finally talk about AMD's new RX 480, the first Polaris 10 based GPU available to the public. It's been a long time coming. The 29th of June has felt like it has dragged on forever, but we can finally see benchmarks and we can finally see the facts. No more speculation. And what I think about the RX 480 is kind of a mixture between a bit of disappointment and basically achieving what I expected it to to achieve now some of you guys looking at the feedback kind of expected a bit a bit more than the RX 480 was going to deliver but for those of us who have been following all the leaks and rumors it kind of performs exactly how or roundabouts what we expected now AMD's aim was to bring out a GPU capable of VR um, below $200 and for the most part they have achieved that I would have to say but it's not a card that's in a in a class of its own unfortunately it's directly competing against the AMD GTX 970 at this current moment and the AMD R9 390 now I'm from Great Britain so looking at the UK prices you can get the 4 gigabyte variant of the RX 480 from £185 £220 if you want that 8 gigabyte variant so um, prices are a bit more steep than I would have liked but obviously with uh, the pound dropping in value in the recent days um, it's to be expected that's a whole other story altogether so looking at the GTX 970 its direct competitor you can get one in the UK for £218 or 219 without any offers so pretty much directly um, in comparison really in price to the GTX 970 looking at the AMD R9 390 you can get yourself a Strix aftermarket cooled model for £230 so that's still compelling value if you're someone that hasn't got a GPU of this class so let's look at performance now the RX 480 does a great job of going head to head with the AMD R9 390 and GTX 970 it completely blows away the R9 380 and GTX 960 so if you're someone with a card like that this is definitely a great option for yourself so looking at a uh, dirt rally at 1920 by 1080 it's 16 percent slower than the AMD R9 390 and it's only two percent slower than the GTX 970 1440p 14% 14 slower than the R9 390 and um, it's actually 2% faster than the GTX 970 when moving up to 1440p now looking at Fallout 4 1% slower than the R9 390 at 1080p and 4% slower than the GTX 970 moving up to 1440p it is actually 12% slower than the R9 390 and 6% slower than the GTX 970 so again not too much in it but um, it's not exactly the uh, groundbreaking performance that some of us expected so moving on to Gears of War Ultimate Edition which is a DirectX 12 title we can see a 3% increase in performance over the R9 390 and 15% increase in performance over the GTX 970 looking at 1080p I mean 1440p sorry performance percent it's one percent slower than the R9 390 but a decent 23 percent faster than the GTX 970 so um, obviously AMD pretty strong in DirectX 12 and asynchronous compute showing its muscle especially at the higher resolutions against the GTX 970 moving on to Grand Theft Auto 5 um, it kind of struggled unfortunately in Grand Theft Auto but I've read reports that it's kind of got uh, some driver issues with um, very very low minimums at the moment so maybe things will improve in the future so the R9 390 at 1080p 15% faster and the GTX 970 also following suit at 15% faster at 1440p again both cars 11% faster than the RX 480 so definitely not too great if you're a GTA 5 player which most of us are moving on to Hitman which is a game that AMD are very very strong in at 1080p it is actually 1% faster than the AMD R9 390 
and a massive 35% faster than the NVIDIA GTX 970. Moving up to 1440p, it is actually 1% slower than the R9 390 and a huge 41% faster than the GTX 970. So again, a DirectX 12 title, asynchronous compute, completely dominating the GTX 970. Moving on to Rise of the Tomb Raider, another DirectX 12 title, we can see that the R9 390, again at 1080p, is faster by 3%, while against the GTX 970, it's 23% faster. Moving up to 1440p, we can see the R9 390 again comes out on top by 2%, and the GTX 970 falls behind by 30% against the RX 480. Last but not least, moving on to The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. The R9 390 at 1080p boasts in a 1% increase in performance while the GTX 970 only lags be like behind by 8% and this is done with um, hair works or any other kind of game works feature off. At 1440p we can see the R9 390 still ahead by 2% while the GTX 970 lags behind by 9% in performance. So that's kind of an idea of how the RX 480 stacks up against the GTX 970 and the R9 390, two cards that are closest in price to the RX 480 at this time. That's about it for performance. Now, I did say I was a little bit disappointed by some aspects of the AMD RX 480. That was mainly just its uh, temperature and its overclocking ability. Now, we all know how shocking the Fury X was at overclocking practically a waste of time. Now the RX 480 with its new Polaris architecture and its dial shrink down all the way to 14 nanometer, I would have expected um, overclocking to have better yields and just AMD just turn the corner. But um, it seems that no RX 480 reference design that I've seen has breached 1400 megahertz, which is kind of disappointing. Not only that, the yields from overclocking are not that great. You're looking at around four to five frames per second so not too much to shout about but it would seem that the RX 480 very much like the GTX 1080 comes out the box very close to its maximum core clock speed. Um, another thing I want to speak about was temperature now these cards average around 80 to 83 Celsius um, in temperature once they're under full load for uh, just a normal kind of game in time of like 10 to 15 minutes and um, for most of us, we expected a bit cooler than that because the size of the chip. Um, but unfortunately, cards are running between 80 and 83 Celsius. It's not such a big deal, but it's definitely one of those things I would have thought AMD would have improved on. Um, so that's the only real, real disappointments of the card. The performance, uh, it's basically what it is for the price. We may see it improve in time with more mature drivers, but I'm just disappointed that the card hasn't really broken any barriers. It hasn't really given us anything new that uh, the GTX 970 and the R9 390 isn't already doing, which is why I'm a bit disappointed that the card isn't basically doing something different in a class of its own. It's basically doing battle with um, a card that's already been released, which is the AMD R9 390. I would have, I would have thought it would have given a clear advantage over that card, given the price. So that's pretty much it. I know the cards does have basically half the power draw that the AMD R9 390 does. I'm not trying to dismiss that. I'm just trying to say it should give you a clear reason to want to upgrade over the R9 390 if you're already an owner of someone with that level of card anyway guys that's pretty much it for me hopefully you've enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching